If there's one thing can easily make you break your photo, that would be composition. Composition is absolutely the most important factor in your photo. Where you place each element within your frame is going to have a huge impact on your work. And it's not just that. Lighting, color, all works for composition. For me, playing with composition is the most fun part about photography, no matter what kind of photography you do. Unfortunately, composition is also something hard to learn. Many photographers don't know what to do with it. They simply just use the rule of third. It's a very sad thing because they really miss a lot. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 composition tips. I hope after watching this video with some practice, you can quickly level up your composition skills. And after that, you might find photography is actually a lot more fun than you thought it was. Okay, let's get started. Tip number one, small, medium, large. Basically what I mean is, when there's a group of uh, items, they're exactly the same size and same shape, but their distance to the camera is different. So the one that closest to the camera appear to be the largest, and the further they're away from the camera, the smaller they will be. So what this can do for us? This helps to create a sense of depth, which is something fairly important for photography, because we're using 2D image. Things like this you can almost find anywhere. They can be uh, columns, they can be stairs. They can be metal frame. And they can be cobblestones. One thing I would like to point out is, when showing a sense of depth, photographers usually tend to use a wide angle lens because telephoto lens just compress the scene. But with this technique, you can do the same even with telephoto lens. For example, the first image was shot with 85 mm lens. Tip number two, less is more. When we try to show people something, we always tend to show them everything. But you might find out when you cut off some unnecessary details, you usually get better result. You show them just enough and let them imagine the rest. It's more fun for them too. For example, in this image, both shots are showing basically a girl with her motorcycle. One showing the whole motorcycle, the other one only show part of it. For me, by only showing the headlight, the helmet, the handlebar is good enough to show, okay, this is a motorcycle. But once you cut off all the unnecessary details, you draw more attention to the most important part, which is your subject. Same thing is true for landscape photography. When you go to a national park or something, people always tend to take a shot that covers everything, and some might even do a panorama shot, which has pushed the whole thing into extreme. I usually like to try something that is zoom in. For example, in this shot, after zoom in, I can cherry pick the hoodoo that has the most interesting shape with the best color. Also, I can incorporate a hiking trail to there so it gives a sense of a scale. So this photo not just showing the beauty of the national park, it also helps people to imagine what it would be like when you're hiking in this park. Remember, photography is not to show people what you see, it's to let them to feel how you feel. Tip number three, big and small. Sometimes you want to show the viewer that this thing is huge. You may even want to exaggerate the fact to make it look bigger than it actually is. And sometimes you want to do the opposite. So how can we do that? Well, you can do that by using the right composition. In order to make something look big, you simply just crop it in. So the feeling will be, this thing is so large it can't even fit in the frame. So in this photo, this lady is not wearing an oversized hat, but by cropping in, it makes the hat look so large. Same as this image. The large flower get cropped in half. Why? Because it's too big. This sword looks so long. It can't even fit in a horizontal frame. I bet you, if I show the tips of the sword, this feeling will be gone right away. Okay, what if you want to do the opposite? You want someone or something look very small. Well, you just need to add a huge element into the frame 
and put it above your subject. So in this photo, you can see, compare with this huge rock, the hiker is so much smaller. And the fact the rock is above the hiker just emphasizes this feeling. What if you want to make this huge rock look small? Well, you just put a large sky above it. You can see this image is clearly now following the rule of third. But it doesn't matter because we have to choose a conversation that best serves our purpose. So the fact that the cloud is so much larger than the rock and it's right above the rock, it creates this feeling that no matter how big these rocks are, compared with Mother Nature, they're just too small. Tip number four, using layers. I'm not talking about Photoshop layers. I'm talking about the elements in your frame that are clearly in different distance to the camera. So the key thing is the difference. The difference of distance has to be big enough so people can easily see they're belong to different layers. So this is basically another tip that help to create a sense of depth. But the difference between this one and the first tip is it doesn't require these elements to be in the same shape and size. So let's take a look at our first sample image. The rock that the model stand on is closest to the camera. The rock to her left is further away. And the rock appears above her is even more further away. So you can see these three groups of rocks belong to three different layers. In this case, the shallow depth of field also helps because it gives each layer a different level of lens blur. But you need to be careful over here. You don't want to overdo it because if you just simply melt the background, then nobody can tell the difference. Let's take a look at the second image. In this image, you can clearly see the three tree branches belong to three different layers. Foreground, middle ground, and background. I want to mention, in order to get the best result, you want to put your main subject in the middle layer. This way, different level of lens blur and the distance just more obvious. I also want to mention for the foreground layer, you want to make sure it's not too large because it could become very distracting. My recommendation is no more than 25%. Tip number five, spacious vs confined. Sometimes you want to create a feeling of a spacious, vast, a lot of room. Sometimes you want to do the opposite. So how can we do that using composition? Okay. If you want to create a feeling of a spacious and vast, you leave a lot of room around your main subject. It makes people feel that there's a lot of breathing room about your main subject so they can free to move. So this evokes a feeling of a vast, a lot of space. If you want to do the opposite, you put your main subject right beside something that represents obstruction. A perfect example can be a wall, but that itself is not good enough. You also need to put your camera right beside this element that represents obstruction. So that way it also will have this point of view effect and make your viewer feel like they are just right there. This will help to draw them into the scene other than make them constantly aware they're looking at the image. This also have another benefit. Because you are so close to the wall, it creates a gradient of lens blur. So what happens is at the edge of the frame, it's going to be more blur. When it's closer to the center of the frame, the clearer the image and the sharper the image will be. So this will draw attention to your main subject. Tip number six, using textures. There are many beautiful textures around us. Sometimes it's worth the effort to look for them. Textures work just like the hand-painted canvas background that we use in the studio. But because they're part of the background, so they blend in much more naturally. And of course, they're completely free. Different textures will evoke different feelings. For example, wood usually will have a calming effect. It makes people feel cozy, safe, and close to nature. Rock and concrete, they evoke feeling of solid, stable, and cold. So if your model changed the pose to reflect the feeling of flexibility and softness, or if they choose off it in warm color, this will help build the contrast. Contrast in this case is a good thing because it helps your subject to be more stand out. Be creative when you're choosing textures. For example, in this photo, I basically just rearranged the hair of both models to make sure it covered a larger area of the carpet. So it turned hair into the texture. In this example, 
I basically use the grass as a texture. Not only the grass evokes feeling of close to nature, when you look at the way we grass, you can almost feel the summer breeze. Photography is more about mood and feeling. Then this is a good example. Tip number seven, add something shiny. So this is a trick that many interior designers use. By adding some shiny decorations will make a boring room look much more interesting. And this is something we can totally do in photography. There are so many shiny things we can find outside. For example, like water, window, glass, or street lights. By adding the shiny things to your background, it naturally increases the contrast of your background. And this effect is much better than you increase the contrast in post-editing. One thing you need to pay attention to is you need to make sure the contrast of your background match the contrast on your subject. The level should be the same. So if you feel that the contrast level on your main subject is too low, then you need to use artificial lighting. When you use artificial lighting, Make sure you put the lighting in the position that gives you the most natural look. You don't want the photo look flashy. If you want to learn more about that, check out my other video about portrait lighting. Tip number A, horizontal vs vertical. So unless you're shooting square cropping, we always have to decide if we want to choose a horizontal orientation or vertical orientation. So when we choose horizontal orientation, we expand the feeling of the width, but sacrifice the height. When we shoot vertical orientation, we expand the feeling of the height, but sacrifice the feeling of the width. So it seems like no matter what we do, there's always gonna be some limitations. Can we overcome this limitation using composition? Yes, there's a way, let me show you. So when you're shooting horizontal orientation, you incorporate vertical lines in your frame. These cropped vertical lines evoke a feeling that there are a lot more room about your frame. And when you're shooting vertical orientation, you incorporate horizontal lines. These crop out the horizontal line give a feeling that there are a lot room either on the left side or right side or both sides of the frame. Remember, the frame is only the limitation of pixel, but not people's feeling and people's feeling are what you should always be focusing on. Tip number nine, frame within a frame. So this is a very simple one. You basically, you put another frame within your frame and it's a very powerful way to tell people look at certain areas of your frame without saying a single word. You just need to be creative when you're picking the frame. There are many different types of frames. Some frames are very obvious, but some frames can be the imagined frame. So try to do both. Tip number 10, primary and secondary subjects. Sometimes you might incorporate more than one subject in your frame. When you do this, you have to make sure you clearly show there are some connections between these two subjects. Otherwise, your viewer might feel like the second subject just happened to be there and it should be removed and it's just a distraction. Let's take a look at some examples. On the first image, the model was standing on a rock with the lighthouse in the back. She's standing straight, her posing kind of reflects the lighthouse behind her. She's there breathing the wind, just like the lighthouse. The second image, the model's dress curve line kind of reflects the curve line on the mirrors. And these curve lines evoke feeling of cozy and soft, just like the cozy interior and soft lighting. Okay, this is it. 10 composition tips. I want to mention two things. First, don't treat them as rules. Treat them as options because they're all designed for different purpose and some of them might be contradict to each other. Second, you can use more than one tips on a single image. So the combination can come out of these 10 tips can be hundreds. These 10 tips will be a good start for you to play with composition. But if you want to truly master composition, you need to do a lot of practice. Okay, that's all. I'll see you next time.